in a sense this historical crisis or this singularity that we're approaching is like a transition from a low dimensional world say a world of two or three dimensions to a world of four five or six dimensions this is what I believe actually happens to a human uh, brain mind system under the influence of psychedelics so in a way the best practice for the uh, approaching singularity is the repeated dissolving and reconstituting of one's personality through the use of psychedelic uh, substances. This is one of the most interesting new psychedelics in the world. This is salvia divinorum and uh, it is definitely one of the plants which will shape the next few decades of the new millennium. This is a coleus. It's ironic that these plants, which have been in our kitchens and in our windowsill flower beds for generations, turn out to contain psychoactive compounds as powerful as any known to science. These are not particularly interesting in terms of drugs, but they're certainly bizarre. When I take psychedelics, I always do it in a shamanic style, usually at night, usually alone, in nature if possible, and then I watch. I pay very close attention. I use my mind as an alchemical vessel for carrying out observations on the union of spirit, my spirit, my personality, and matter, the physical matter of the substance that I'm ingesting. Nothing in human experience is as much like the singularity as a psychedelic experience. In a way, it's a microcosmic anticipation of this macrocosmic event in history. Uh, when we take psychedelics, we undergo a mini apocalypse, a mini revelation, and it positions us then for these larger events in the historical time stream. I'd like to climb up here with me. This is one of the most interesting plants in the garden. This is Socotria viridis. This is the plant which causes the vision. When taken with ayahuasca, when taken as a liquid, the experience lasts about four to six hours. It's not as intense as smoking it. Smoking it is the most intense experience, this side of the yawning grave. Before his death in 2000, McKenna noticed an unrecognized pattern in the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. The six lines and 64 possible combinations can be expressed as a ratio of change in each hexagram and plotted on a graph. When McKenna mapped that graph over a timeline, he found intriguing correlations that matched all 4,000 years of recorded history. His graph starts with the I Ching's creation in China's Shang Dynasty, the same period as the dawn of civilization in other parts of the world. The 64 hexagrams repeat 64 times over history. McKenna called his theory time wave zero. The highs and lows of his I Ching graph seem to have accurately predicted the fall of the Roman Empire, the discovery of the New World, and the world wars of the 20th century. But the strangest thing of all was that McKenna's timeline came to an end on one specific date. December 21st, 2012. It was later that McKenna discovered that the Mayan civilization ended its calendar at the point of 2012. He felt there was something truly prophetic about that date. Did the I Ching from ancient China and the Mayan calendar from medieval Mexico independently arrive at the same date for doomsday? What I feel is particularly remarkable about the current time is that we have a number of prophecies that all seem to imply that something is going to happen in the 21st century. 
What can we expect in the coming decades? The prospects of technology appeal to people's deepest fears as well as to their highest hopes. A rational debate about the future seems no longer possible. In fact, such discussion, by definition, is beyond our human capacities. Aren't we still too human to be prepared for becoming transhuman? It is an enormous privilege to be alive right now and to be a part of this movement. And it's a very difficult time. I don't deny that at all. I look at it more as a birth pain. That here is this change that's occurring and we're coming down the birth canal and there's blood around and it's a difficult process. But it's a birth that is occurring. It's not a death. And I think that when future humans look back on this era from several hundred years in the future, they will not remember this time as one when we squandered the resources of the planet, when we destroyed our planet essentially. They'll look at this as an extraordinary moment in time when we developed the basic uh, technologies, the, the basis for their societies. We developed genetic engineering, the ability to basically rework our own genetic blueprint, which is something unprecedented. It's never happened in three and a half billion years of history. We began to move out into space. For three and a half billion years, life, all of life, has been constrained to this thin film on the surface of the planet. And now, quite suddenly, in just an instant in time, we're moving out towards the universe. And the third thing that has occurred in our era is artificial intelligence, computers. Suddenly, non-living material is beginning to achieve a level of complexity that rivals that of life itself. So these are three things that are absolutely unprecedented in the history of life. And they're occurring now. And is it any surprise that this is something that is jarring and shaking up the environment and causing extinctions? This is going to provide the basis, not just for the next hundred years, but for thousands of years, tens of thousands, if not millions of years. And I see a long future stretching out ahead. Obviously, if we're experiencing more change now in a year than we previously experienced in a thousand years, we can propagate that trend into the future and see that a day will come when we will experience more change in an hour than we have experienced in the past 20, 30,000 years. A situation like that is unimaginable, so we call it uh, a singularity, a place where the normal rules of modeling break down. Uh, modern religions have anticipated the singularity by calling it uh, the eschaton or the end of time. Technological communities have anticipated the singularity by uh, thinking in terms of artificial intelligences or something like that. In whatever form it takes, we seem to be on the cusp of a dramatic evolutionary leap into a deeper order of complexity than biology or biology plus culture has been able to provide. We're on the brink of something truly awesome and unknown.